So thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for you are good. Thank you for your word. It is precious. And thank you that you are present and we love you, Lord Jesus. We love you. Amen. Amen. So Hebrew 13, verse 8, very well-known scripture. Um, just let me get my pen here, or my chalk. Yes. Very well-known, Hebrew 13, verse 8, and then I'm going to read to you Hebrew 1, verse 3. And um, maybe it will be a shocker for some people to know this, what I'm going to say to you because sometimes we think in a way or we preach and we heard things in a way and, um, and that separates us from God who He really is. God loves us when we know Him and He wants us to know Him. He wants us to represent Him correctly. He, he wants us to um, to honor Him as Lord and Savior and, and know that He is love and He is gracious. And, um, so this is so well known, um, but I'm going to explain to you because even if this scripture is well known, we did not ever think really on things. And I'm going to show you this morning how things can be maybe in error because we do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. It says Jesus Christ the Messiah is always. So I'm going to draw on my board a timeline. And I'm, this is the beginning, the beginning and this is the end. And in my timeline, I'm going to place Jesus Christ there in the middle. Because He's the beginning and the end. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Alright? And here we are. And this is the past. He's the beginning, Jesus Christ and the end. So, it says, Jesus Christ the Messiah is always. Is always. That word always in Greek, in Hebrew, in Zulu, in Kosa, in um, French, in whatever language, that word is always. Always. Jesus Christ is always the same. He is always the same. So I must write this down because you are going to be shocked to see it. You're going to be shocked to see it. He is always, always. Is there any time in always that's not part of that? He's always the same. Second point, he's the same. Very important, God is always Jesus Christ the Messiah is always the same. Yesterday, past, today, yes, and forever to the ages. To the ages. So yesterday, Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, always. He is always the same. Today, he is always the same in your, our future. Alright. Hebrew 1 verse 3. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is always the same. He is always the same. Hebrew 1 verse 3. He, Jesus Christ, is the sole expression of the soul means the one, the main, the one, soul, the exact, the soul expression of the glory of God, the light being, 
the outrying of radiance of the, the divine and he is the perfect imprint and the very image of God's nature Jesus Christ is the perfect imprint the very image of God's nature upholding and maintaining and guiding and propelling the universe by his mighty word of power when he had by offering himself com accomplished our cleansing of sin and radiance of guilt radiance of guilt he sat down at the right hand of the divine majesty on high Hebrew 1 verse 3 so we have two scriptures already the first is Hebrew 13 verse 8 Jesus Christ is the same always yesterday today and forever so look here all right here is the beginning with Adam then we've got Jesus Christ and then it is us I'm going to write it here all right I'm going to write it here us let, let us see it says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday yesterday Jesus Christ is the same yesterday to who is, to who is he speaking here to us. to us so we are here on our timeline where is yesterday so Eddie says everything this side is it right so yesterday can I draw a line like this Jesus Christ is for me the same today as yesterday but it's now for me and I'm living here I'm going to show you something shocking yesterday today and forever Jesus Christ is the sole expression the exact image of God we've got that one all right Job 23 verse 13 Job 23 verse 13 and 14 so here on my board I'm speaking on yesterday today that's my theme yesterday today Jesus Christ is the sole expression of the glory of God so if you see God and you see Jesus it's the same do you know this this thing what is this Equals. equals so if I said yeah God equals Jesus is that right all right God equals Jesus Jesus is the perfect imprint this is the the show Jesus is the perfect imprint of God the Father Jesus Christ is the same yesterday to dine forever he does not change I'm going to explain to you now Job, Job 23 verse 13 But he is in one mind. In one translation says this. But he is in one mind. But he is unchangeable in another translation. Jesus Christ is one mind. He is unchangeable. And who can turn him? And what he wants to do, that 
he does. For he performs that which he has planned for me, and of many such matters he is mindful. God has one mind and is unchangeable. So, Jesus is always the same. He is always the same. He is the perfect imprint of God the Father. <laughs> you do not know what I'm going to. <laughs> You're going to be shot. But I want you to understand that because you see I'm, I'm working with mindsets for many years. There was preaching and teachings of stuff that is not, not correct. And that's why I'm doing it this way, that I must do it this way. Because God wants us to represent Him right. Jesus is yesterday, today and forever the same. He's the perfect imprint of God the Father. He's always the same. He's always the same. But Jesus or God is unchangeable. God is unchangeable. What does that word mean? The same. Can't change. He cannot change. <clears throat> He's unchangeable. He has one mind. I'm telling you, I'm going to shock you. God is unchangeable. He's the same. He has one mind. Jesus is the perfect imprint of God the Father. I was shocked actually when I saw it. Hebrews 16 verse 17 and 18 and 19 and 20. Hebrews 6. The 6. Yeah. Listen to the words unchangeable. <laughs> By now you know God is always the same. Alright. And He's unchangeable. Listen here. According to God also, in His desire to show more conv convincingly, and beyond doubt to those who were to inherit the promises, the unchangeableness of His purpose and plan. Oh my word. Unchangeable of His purposes and plan. Eddie? He's unchangeable in His plan. And His purposes. He is always the same. He is unchangeable. Of his purposes and plan, intervened, mediated with an oath. He, he, he do it with an oath to us, to reveal it to us. This was so that by two unchangeable things, his promise and His oath. Alright? So yeah, it's something. His promise is unchangeable. Promise. And His oath. Uh, oath is out like this. Is it like that? Yeah, oath. It's unchangeable. But Jesus in His character... Is unchangeable. Is that true? Jesus looks like God. In his character, in his promise, is unchangeable. In his oath, is unchangeable. In his character, is it a C? Character. Character. 
Is it this? C-H. C-H. Yeah. Karak. Is it the A? Yeah. Like this, character. C-T-E-R. C before the T. C. All right. Jesus Christ is the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the perfect imprint of God. He is unchangeable in His promises, in His plan, in His purpose, in His oath, in His character. Did I say anything up till now that I did not read to you? <coughs> no. Alright. Verse 19. Now we have this hope and sure and steadfast anchor. What hope do we have? An anchor that we can hold on. That is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And it's unchangeable. And Jesus Christ is the perfect imprint of God the Father. We have this steadfast. We have this hope. And steadfast anchor. Of the soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it. That reaches farther and enters into the very same certainty of the presence within the veil. Seven verse twenty-four. Hebrews seven verse twenty-four. Jesus, because he continue ever. Have unchangeable priesthood. Jesus is Melchizedek. Eddie, where is Melchizedek? Here, yeah, before the cross. Melchizedek came to? Abram, here. Yeah. So it's Jesus visit Abram here. Yeah. And Jesus is according to this order. He does the same. As this Melchizedek, everything because he is Melchizedek. And his priesthood is unchangeable. He is yesterday, today, and forever. His character is the same, his oath is the same, his promise is the same, his purpose was the same, his plan is the same since the beginning till now. Why? Do we preach and think of God in the Old Testament differently than Jesus Christ in the New Testament? You see, we think of God of the Old Testament a way. And we preach God the Father as a way. And we saw Him a way. And I've never heard, ever, of any message that anyone ever preached about God the Father as gracious. And as a love. We preach God the Father as Something else. But Jesus is here to show us the perfect imprint of who he was. There is no change in the plan or the purpose or the promise or the oath or the character. <laughs> it was always been the same. He is the same yesterday. Not only yesterday, but how far is this going back? Till the beginning. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we can have this hope, an anchor of our soul, 
that which he did here, he will do it exactly here. No, Eddie. Some people, oh boy, we do not want things God that did it here. He will not do it this way. This is how we preach. We think Jesus Christ as a person now who is light and is life and is grace is something else that was not here. But God was since the beginning. He's always, he's unchangeable. He has an unchangeable priesthood. And the way he did it here, he will do it there. The way his character was here, is here. The way he promises and did stuff, is the same here. It's, it's unchangeable. No, we say, we do not read Old Testament, because the God of the Old Testament is not the same as Jesus Christ. But do you know, I can give you hundreds, maybe thousands, literally, I can do that. I can give it to you. If you email it to me, I will give you the scripture. Listen, how the New Testament scriptures here is only a mentioning of the scriptures here of the Old Testament yeah. and I'm going to give you only now a few oh no a little bit but I can do it I believe hundreds of time to do it to show you you see we think when the disciples ministered the gospel it is a new thing it is Jesus stands, he is a new one, he is the gracious one, he is the life one, he, you know, but we do not know that all this scriptures is coming from this side, because he is unchangeable, they knew it, but we do not know it, we can preach God of the Old Testament, and the God of the Old Testament was gracious, and loving, Just as we worship now Jesus now, yeah, men could have done it before Jesus. We think that the church do stuff and hear stuff and understand that stuff and have new things that was not in the Old Testament because of the law. We judge God because of the law that was upon men. But God is unchangeable. It's always been the same. And we can know things. And if we do not know things here, you will never know them here. Because you will read things here and you will not understand. It comes actually from here. Exodus 19 verse 6, speaking to Moses. That shows me God's heart. Yeah. Who is actually Jesus' heart. It says, And ye shall be unto my kingdom and priest, a holy nation. Amen. Did you know that Jesus came to Moses and told him, Moses, come here. You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Mm -hmm. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. New Testament, Peter, is saying this to the church. But we thought he said it to us as the church. But he said it already there. And this is only a mentioning today what he said there. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. That you show forth the praises of him. Who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is only one of many. Psalm 118 verse 6. Psalm 118 verse 6. David. So it is Moses and Peter. Listen, Peter. 
almost all the things that Peter said, he got it here. I can show you. But you do not have the time. But I've seen it. Psalm 118 verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me, says David. David. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. Hebrew Paul is saying in Hebrew 13 verse 6. So that we may be boldly say, the Lord is my helper. And I will not fear what man shall do unto me. What was here is here. God is the same in his plan and in his purposes. Do you think that the kingdom is a new plan? No. The kingdom was since the beginning his plan. The king, the Messiah, was since the beginning his plan. His purposes, the character, his oath, his promises, whatever. Jesus is the perfect imprint of God the Father. I will not fear. Yeah, I will not fear. I have an hope, an anchor of my soul, because God already said it here yeah, to David. I will not fear. But this is good scripture. Why do I speak to you? You love this. Oh, you are a royal priesthood. Oh, yes, the Lord said it to Moses. Thank you, Jesus. Is it that? Is it right? All right. Then David says, I will fear no man. And Paul is saying, after Jesus Christ, I will fear no man. Oh, thank you. So that's a good promise. I love it. I love it. Psalm 95 verse 7. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. Today if you hear, will hear his voice. Hearken not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So Psalm is before Jesus Christ says, Listen, do not hog your heart. After Jesus Christ, in Hebrew 3, Paul is saying, While is it said, while it is said, Today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in a provocation. For some, when they heard, did provoke, and how be it not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. So Paul is mentioning something about Moses at this side. Moses, listen, open your ears, do not provoke God, do not harden your heart. After Jesus Christ, Paul is saying this to the church. Listen, do not provoke God. Do not harden your hearts. Do not harden your hearts. Because not all of them came out of Egypt because they hardened their hearts. So if God has a promise unto you, don't harden your heart. Why? Because maybe some of us won't come out of Egypt. Egypt is now a spiritual place. No, it, it can't be. Jesus Christ is grace. Jesus Christ is life. No, grace will cover you. Listen, in the New Testament, Paul, the Apostle Paul, is saying exactly what in the Old Testament was because there's no change. He's an unchangeable God. In his promises, in his character, in his heart, in all what he said. But we think we can do whatever we want because we are under grace. <coughs> the church is preaching a, a God, a two type of God. 
God the Father, thank you. We are not under Him anymore. Jesus Christ, thank you. And now we can do whatever we want. And we read only the New Testament. But don't you know the New Testament is actually more than half only what was mentioned here? It's the same. He has an unchangeable priesthood. Leviticus. Leviticus. Leviticus 11 verse, verse 44. Leviticus. 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 It's all about laws. You remember God gave laws unto Moses. For I am the Lord your God. I'm the Lord your God. Who is this God? God is equal to Jesus. Jesus is equal to God. If I speak about God, I speak about Jesus. Jesus is grace and life and mercy. God in the Old Testament is grace, love and mercy. <clears throat> for, for I am the Lord your God. In brackets, my own words, says Jesus. So consecrate yourself and be holy. This is now a law to Moses. Yeah. Consecrate means set you apart. So today we must set us apart because it's unchangeable. Yourself and be holy. For I am holy, says God. Neither defile yourself with any matter, manner of thing. Do not defile yourself with anything. For I am holy, says God. Set you apart. Set you one side from the world. But Peter, 1 Peter 1 verse 16 says exactly the same. Because it is written. Now Peter is also saying, before he's going to say something, he says, it is written. What does it mean, it is written? It means it is already been said here yeah, in the Old Testament. It is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And if you call on, my, on the Father, who without respect of persons, he is no respect of person, judges according to every man's work, God judges every man according to his work. It is New Testament. 1 Peter 1 verse 16 and 17. Peter is a New Testament disciple. And he is mentioning exactly the scripture of Leviticus of Moses. It's not something that we want to hear or think on. But it means God is unchangeable. Because it is written. He could have said, listen, I know it was written in the Old Testament about all this stuff. Thank God for His grace. We are not under that anymore. But He did not. He said it is written. God says He is holy and separate yourself. Now I want to tell you God is unchangeable. Jesus, the Jesus that you know it looks exactly like the God of the Old Testament. And He is the perfect imprint. And it's unchangeable. And it's always the same. Yesterday, today and forever. Since the beginning is the Alpha and the Omega. And that which you know of Him. He's always the same. It says, He is no respect of person. Does this stand today? Jesus is no respect of person. 
the, that means he will not say, I choose you, I do not choose you. Eddie, you can do that, but sorry, Ika, you cannot do that. He is no respecter of person. It's the same. That means it's the same. Everything that counts for Eddie counts for everyone. He is always the same. Everything that counts for Moses counts for me. According to every man's work, God will judge you according to your work in the grace time. In Jesus' time. And it says, pass the time of your sojourney here in fear. I cannot take that. Peter and John and the, the, the disciples, they said, when the church started, they said, listen, we think we must uh, sell all your stuff, bring the money, and then we divide and we give everyone exactly the same. Are you with me? So the church says, yes. Eddie, are you sure? You don't need to. Eddie says yes. Quiver says yes. We are going to sell all our land and all our stuff. We are going to bring the money to the apostles. Are you with me? But Quiver can say, no, I'm not with that. And then me as the apostle says, Quiver, are you sure? Bless you. It's all right. You don't have to. No one time, Quibus go and sell his stuff, Eddie sell his, sell his stuff, Quibus came and he gave only half of the money that he said, he, he, was, he, he was not in compulsory to, to do what he said he's going to do, do you understand that? He had the choice. But he and Lani, let's only give off. They come to me, and I said, Quibbers, but the Lord says, this is not the full amount. Why do you lie? No, I did not lie. In grace time, in grace time, I said, Quibbers, you will die now. Boom. Lonnie did not know Quibbers die. Eddie took him. They bury him. Lonnie came in and I said, Lonnie, is this the money? So I said, yeah, yes. I said, why do you lie? No, I do not lie. You do not know that they just bury Quibbers. Oops. In grace time. In your past, in your sojourney, in your walking, it is in 1 Peter, after the cross, in Christ's time. Do not lie to the Holy Spirit. You don't need to lie. But walk in fear. The same things. For God is the same. What He said here, He said it here. They only mentioned it here. He's always been the same. We preach another type of God sometimes that now God is, you know. One preacher asked me in the week, what does it mean when Paul would say, man, give that man over to Satan. But there's big, listen, there's, I do not want to mention their names now. One of the biggest uh, churches in America, great guy, everyone reads his books. He would say, Paul made many mistakes. And he has thousands and thousands sitting in front of him. Paul made many mistakes. 
because God, I do not know God this way. You know we do not know Jesus this way. But Jesus is the perfect imprint of this God the Father. And what they said here is what is here. He was, he, he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And if God says separate you, be clean, be holy, do not harden your hearts, listen, don't lie, you don't need to lie, why do you lie? Do you understand that? God is the same. I'm finished with this, Isaiah 23 verse 9. The Lord of hosts has purposed it in accordance with his fixed principles. The Lord. This is Isaiah, before Jesus Christ, years a prophet, saying this. The Lord of hosts has purposed it in accordance with his fixed principles of his government. It's fixed. It's unchangeable. It's fixed. To defile the pride of all glory, Jesus Christ stood here. Before he came here, he stood here already and he says, I will defile the pride of all glory and to bring into this honor and content all the honor of the earth. No, it can't be. Jesus says in James, James, the brother of Jesus, write it now. And he says, God, my brother, Jesus Christ, is the same yesterday and forever. He says, but Jesus gives us more and more grace, power of the Holy Spirit, to meet this evil tendency and all other fully. That is why he says, God sets himself against the proud and the haunty, but gives grace continually to the lowly, those who are humbly enough to receive it. Those who are humbly enough to receive it. But God himself opposed the proud and the pride. So do you get children of God here that has pride? Boastful? Hardened hearts? Do whatever they want? They put their hands on the Bible. And promise in the courts. I promise it is the truth and nothing but the truth. And they are Christians. And they think, help me God. So help me God. And they think that grace would cover you here. Because Jesus is different in our mindsets than he was here. No, the Bible says he is in plan in purposes, in promises, in oath, in character, the perfect imprint, the sole expression of God. He is unchangeable priesthood. What he said will be just like that. Thank God for grace to cover us. But grace also covered here. Yeah, David did stupid things. He killed people. <laughs> but there was still a, a consequence of the things that he did here. Because of grace. He is unchangeable. He is the same yesterday, today and forever. And if God says here to people, I love you. I'm merciful, I'm gracious. He's always he's also said here. Yeah. He did not change in his character, in his purposes, in his love, in his mercy. He was always been the same. But this is to the lonely, the lowly, those who are humble enough to receive it. That's the thing. 
Are, are we, are we, can we humble ourselves before the Lord Jesus Christ? Do not think that we are free. Yeah, and those people were not free because of the thing of they have law and we did not have law. The law was given unto men. It has nothing to do with God's side. Eddie, did, how many sermons that you ever heard in your life? Thousands? Did you ever think on that maybe this God is exactly the same as this God? And he does it the same? He never changed? He never changed. And that what we knew of Jesus is exactly what we need to know of God the Father. <laughs> this God the Father is not this angry. He's always been the same. But this God is righteous. Though that God is righteous because they are one. They are equal. This God is pure. This God is pure. This God is love. That God is love. This God will never leave you nor forsake you. Moses, I will never leave you, forsake you. Jesus, the disciple says, Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Nothing changed. Because God is the same yesterday, today and forever. And we must not think of God the Father as anything different. And if you read Old Testament, do what it says. Live by it. Because everything in the New Testament, more than 50%, is actually only a direct quote from the Old Testament. I do not speak now about law things like do not wear linen and wool with each other. Because that has a symbolic meaning or something here. But if Jesus Christ who is grace and spirit of love that was outside of me this time and only visited and now is in you that same God of grace and spirit of righteousness and purity and everything that is stood here will be inside of us. Live your life. Sojourn this earth. Pass the time in fear. Where does we read that? In 1 Peter 1 verse 17. This side. Are you shocked? We must not be shocked. I hope we understand something more about the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. May this word bless you in Jesus' mighty name.